In this episode of Lessons from Legends, we will look at billionaire businessman Dave Hodgson from the Sunshine Coast in Australia. We will learn how he went from being $70,000 in debt to being worth over $100 million in just two years and eight months. The secrets of his billion dollar fortune today on Lessons from Legends. The host of Lessons from Legends, Dr. Baron Gilfillan, was the TV producer for evangelist Reinhard Bonnke. Seeing multitudes saved and healed at Bonnke's crusades inspired him to create a discipleship program for the Global Harvest, an international school of ministry known as the ISOM. ISOM is now the world's largest video Bible school with 20,000 training sites in 150 nations. Instructors on the program include more than 100 legendary teachers from the global body of Christ, including Jack Hayford, John Bevere, Joyce Meyer, Reinhard Bonnke, A.R. Bernard, and T.L. Osborne. In this podcast, Dr. Barron breaks down specific essential lessons he's learned over 30 years from these legends of the Christian faith in a concise, personal, and easy to understand way. So here is today's Lessons from Legends podcast with your host, Dr. Baron Gilfillan. Hi, welcome to Lessons from Legends. I'm your host, Dr. Baron Gilfillan. And today we're going to speak about somebody who has massively impacted my own personal life. His name is Dave Hodgson, and he is out of Australia, but originally he is from Zambia in Southern Africa. And Dave grew up in Africa, and he has now become a billionaire business person. We're going to just look at his story and his journey, and we're going to learn some lessons from his life, which are profound and which should impact anyone who listens to this teaching. Let me give you a little bit of background. We produce a video Bible school. We are in 150 countries. We are in over 80 languages. And when we began recording for this curriculum, um, we began with Bible training. All of these areas that to us were very foundational in a spiritual sense. We discovered a teaching called the Seven Mountain Strategy by Lance Walnow. These are the seven mountains of culture. Um, these were the political mountain, there was the education mountain, there was the arts and entertainment mountain, there was the media mountain, um, there was the business mountain, and then the family, and also the church mountain. These were seven mountains of culture. We wanted to train people to go into those seven mountains and to make a difference and to change them. Well, I saw the model and I saw the teaching and I had the understanding, but I was looking for the prototype of somebody who was actually doing it. That was in about 2012. And it was at that time that I went to a conference that was out in Connecticut. It was a business and a marketplace conference. And I got to hear a person from Australia, and it was the first time I'd ever heard him. I only heard him for 15 minutes because everybody else had used up their time. And because he was so respectful of the time of the conference, he only spoke for 15 minutes. 15 minutes of listening to Dave Hodgson, I got into the bus going back to the hotel and I said to Dave, wherever I have to bring my cameras, I am coming to film you. I need to capture what God's given you because I perceived he was carrying something from heaven. He was carrying an understanding and a wisdom concerning the marketplace. And I asked Dave, what's your most important message? And he said to me, ousting Babylon from the marketplace. I said, what is Babylon? What does that mean? And he said, it's the spirit of greed, fear, and corruption. That unless the church can learn to get rid of that spirit of mammon, that spirit of greed and fear and of corruption, then if that doesn't get out of the equation, then that spirit of mammon will control everything. He said, I've taken over 32 businesses, many of them owned by Christians, and every one of them was riddled with the spirit of Babylon, the spirit of mammon. Well, that began this journey of connecting with Dave, of trying to learn from him and try to understand his background and his amazing testimony of how he got saved. Now, David ended up living in Perth, Australia. Now, let me just give you a quick segue of how he got to Perth, Australia. Dave was raised, in, uh, first of all, in Zambia. He actually spoke the Bemba language, was his first language. And then at the age of four, he was sent to boarding school in South Africa. Dave had to travel two weeks on a train, two weeks at the age of four. He was sent alone uh, on a train down to Southern Africa to go to boarding school. 
And of course, when he landed there, he got bullied. He got, he got treated terribly. He had nobody to defend him. And from the very youngest age, Dave became a fighter. And this was a, a hallmark of his life. And so when he got older, he actually joined the military. And Dave became uh, not only an incredible soldier, he also became a special op soldier. And Dave would actually go into enemy lines. He actually would blow up bridges. He would do all kinds of uh, very, you know, those days he was not a Christian. And um, he was just a mercenary, really, in some many of the years of his life. And he was a soldier. And the Zimbabwe government now actually did not like Dave. They thought that he had blown up some helicopters, which he actually didn't do. He was in another country when those uh, helicopters were blown up, but they tried to blame it on him, and he had to flee the country for his life. He ended up going to Singapore, and then he went on to Australia, and he ended up in Perth. His wife was a Christian, but he was not, and he uh, started a motorcycle company. He was uh, operating a great motorcycle company. His wife would drag him to church. He said it was easy to go to church because he could do business with the Christians, and he said he could sell motorcycles to them. But he was not saved, and he was not a Christian. Now, um, Dave was uh, just conducting his life, going on with his work, and his wife said to him, look, there's a guy called Reinhard Bonker coming to town. You need to come to visit him. You need to see him. He's from Africa. You're from Africa. You need, and he just, uh, she, she literally did a Delilah on him. And for, for weeks and weeks, she just said, please, you need to come to this meeting. And he finally agreed, I'll go to this meeting. He said, but I've got some ground rules. I don't want anybody to know I'm there. I'm coming in late. He said, I'm not going to use a company car. It's a 6,000-seater auditorium. He said, I'm going to sit at the very back under the balcony in the darkness, and then I'm leaving early so nobody sees me there. Now, Reinhardt is now there, and he is at the meeting. He didn't want to be there, and Reinhardt is preaching from the front with spotlights in his face, and the entire crowd is dark. And uh, in the middle of the meeting, Reinhardt stops, and he points under the balcony, and he says, there's a man back there. He says, you're in the motor industry. And he says, um, you're here under duress. And God's been knocking at your door for a long time. And this may be the last chance you have. You need to come down and give your life to Jesus Christ. And he turns to his wife and he says, did you tell him I'm here? Did somebody tell him? And, and she says, nobody told him. And that was the turning point where Dave actually came and made a decision and gave his heart to Jesus Christ. And he became a Christian. Now, he didn't know much about serving God. He didn't have the background, but all he did understand was that it was a soldier. He knew that, that God was the boss and he was the commanding officer and he was the soldier. And so that was a mentality that Dave approached serving God was serving God as a soldier. And that's a major point because um, not only did Dave, uh, uh, you know, was he a Salu scout, but when he was in Zimbabwe, he became a member of the SAS, which is the British version of the Salu scouts or the Green Berets or the Navy SEALs, the, the Marines. These are, the, these are the, the most highly trained uh, military people of our day. And um, he was both a Salu scout and an SAS soldier. Dave is now living in Australia, and now he has become a Christian. And he was basically saying to God, look, I will just serve you. You tell me what to do, and I'll follow. He ended up moving now to Cairns, to the northeastern side of Australia, up near the Barrier Reef. And while he's there, you know, he begins attending a church. He begins supporting the church. He starts another business, and he's doing very well. He's got his family there. And you know, his pastor's a great pastor, and he's uh, now on, on the board, like watching, making sure that they have enough money for everything, and he knows what their finances are like. And then God speaks to the pastor and says, I want you to go and plant a church down in the Sunshine Coast, north of Brisbane, on the east side of Australia. A prophet comes to Dave and his wife, and the prophet says to them, he says, you know, I felt God speak to me and show me that you and your wife are supposed to follow. You're supposed to go and help that pastor to establish that church. Dave says, look, that doesn't make any sense. It's maybe my son, maybe somebody else. He said, uh, we've got our business here. We've got our family here. We've got three kids. We've got, you know, we're, we're, we're established here. We've got employees. We've got all of these things. He said, there's no way that we're going to leave it all. And the prophet says, well, you know, it's up to you, but I'm just giving you what God told me. 
Well, from the moment he disobeyed and the moment he did not follow what God was leading, his entire business collapsed. Over the next two to three years, I mean, he lost everything. He not only lost everything, but in order to, to close up the company, he ended up having to pay everybody off. He ended up $70,000 in the, in the red. And so he had $70,000 worth of credit card debt. And at that point, he finally said to God, all right, God, I'm going to obey you. And he gets down to, uh, to the Sunshine Coast and he joins himself to that church. And it's called the City Church. And he You know, at that place, that's where God begins to visit him again. And about the third week he's there, as he's in the congregation, a prophet uh, stands up and, and begins to speak. And he says, there's a person in the back there. And he points to Dave and he says, it's going to be just in a short period of time, you'll be writing six digit checks to this church. And Dave was just, you know, like flabbergasted. Here he is broke. He's $70,000 in the red. And, um, but he had now obeyed God. Now, Dave goes and he's looking for a way to get money that he can write six-digit checks. And so he, um, he applies for a job. And now when he goes for the interview, he doesn't have any decent clothes. So he had to borrow clothes from his pastor. His pastor's clothes came up to, you know, maybe halfway up his arm. And he, um, you know, had a tie that didn't fit and a shirt that didn't fit. And he just looked terrible, but that's all that he had. And he went for this job interview. Now there were 20 other people in the interview. And Dave's sitting in this waiting room, and uh, he just becomes incredibly intimidated. They're all in their three-piece suits. They're all, you know, just looking the part. And, um, you know, Dave uh, goes into the restroom, and he just begins to just, you know, just absolutely freak out. He begins to just panic, and uh, he's just fearful, and he's just afraid. And, and as he's looking at himself in the mirror, he felt, he felt God speak to him and say, Dave, where did you learn that fear? He said, I took you through wars. I took you through the training of a soldier. I took you through all of these horrific situations. You're blowing up bridges. You're going into enemy lines. You never had fear any time then. But now facing an interview, you have fear. And he literally pulled himself together, went back into that room, and he got the job. And in, in two years and eight months, his business and his, and his skill that he had, he took him from, from 70000 in the red to $100 million. What happened was that Dave stepped in to understand doing business God's way. And I want to just bring up the fact that he had an amazing relationship with that local church. And so he believes in this amazing relationship that everybody in business needs to have with their local church. The church is a spiritual covering, and then the the warfare is happening in the marketplace. And we think, you know, spiritual warfare only happens in the church. No, it happens in life. It happens in the marketplace. It happens to every business deal, every situation where finances are on the line that can be used in the kingdom of God. There's going to be a warfare. And Dave has this amazing synergy of understanding that he's always covered by his church, that his church and him are in partnership, that one covers spiritually, the other one covers naturally, and the two together are working together for the same purpose of building the kingdom of God. When we go down to the, uh, the main message that Dave has learned and that he has, has, has grown in and has built and has developed, it's this understanding of mammon, that spirit of, of greed and, and Dave just really talks about how greed is really behind so much of the, of the demonic influence of the enemy into personal lives, into our, into our businesses, into our families. You know, you just have to have a person die in a family and you have people just going after an inheritance and suddenly that spirit of mammon manifests itself. Or you see it in churches, whenever money is involved, that whenever money is and there comes greed and there comes a wanting to manipulate, control, and take uh, ownership of and to try and get for one's own gain and one's own use, that spirit of mammon has to be, uh, you know, broken off us. It has to be broken off every person who wants to be successful. And Dave had to learn that although you can have money, money can never have you that that spirit of mammon can never, ever control anything that you do in your life. And I believe that that message is just so powerful. And of the 32 companies that Dave ended up taking over, and he's now built a a, a $1.2 billion uh, 
conglomerate called the Paladin Group of 32 companies. And these companies now, every single one of them, Dave, make sure that the spirit of mammon is out of the picture, that greed is not there, and that people are not driven by the money. They're driven by the, the, the vision and the direction of what they're accomplishing, and that the resources and the, and the, and the finances that come in are there for whatever God tells them they're supposed to use it for. And that the money never controls them. That, that no matter what happens, you know, um, they are uh, not controlled by money. Now, as Dave has traveled, and I've ended up traveling to him with him, one of the things I've noticed that Dave is, he travels to the ends of the earth. And he has. Now, it's not as easy right now with COVID. However, in the time when he was able to, he literally would spend up to $3 million of his own money every year just to go and minister. And when he would go, because I would travel with him and I would try and open doors for him, um, he would, uh, you know, minister literally day and night. He would, uh, he would pour himself out into all the business leaders and he would never take an honorarium. He would cover his own airfare and he would never sell a product. And I was like, Dave, why do you do that? And Dave basically said, I never want a single person to accuse me that I'm here for any other reason than the commanding officer told me, that God told me that I'm supposed to be here. And so um, the amazing um, ability that he's had, and he's put certain things in his life to make sure that that spirit of mammon never grabs him, that it's never the controlling factor. Whether he goes to minister, he doesn't want money to be even in the equation. He's not there to do anything else than to bring the word of God to people and teach them how to do business, God's will, God's way, to discover their assignment with their calling, their ability, and then to learn to get rid of the spirit of mammon and then to step into a kingdom assignment and learn to have God step in and his grace and his mercy and his ability come into the mix. And then God begins to you know, anoint the business and he begins to anoint the work of people's hands. And then you see multiplication. And this is a principle in the word of God. Now, because of his success and because he's gotten influence, he has been able to now have impact into, you know, universities and into business circles and into high level investment uh, uh, corporations. And he goes into some of the most difficult places and some of the richest people on the planet. And Dave, you know, said that he had to cross a billion dollars so he could enter into another echelon of influence. So one of the reasons that Dave even has resources, the reason he pursues to grow his portfolio and to develop massive wealth is so he can have massive influence. Here he is, you know, one of the wealthiest people that's around, and <clears throat> he does not allow that to affect who he is and how he lives and how he operates. But he still pursues the resources for one reason only, and that is for kingdom influence. Dave Hodgson has become active in terms of the Christian Coalition of Australia and to begin to influence into the educational system, into the media situation, into the political arena. And, you know, just speaking with politicians and saying with them, look, what is your platform about life? What is your platform about, you know, the poor? How, what is your platform about uh, all of these situations? Dave's focus has been um, that all shall prosper. And if this gets down to the heart of his philosophy of business, his business is that it cannot be a deal, any deal that a business cuts or any deal that a business makes or any deal that a person gets involved in, it must never be that one person wins and another person loses. It must be that everybody wins. There needs to be what he calls that all shall prosper. In fact, he has a movement called the ASP movement, which is that all shall prosper. And that movement is really training and raising up a new generation of leaders in Australia that are starting to do business God's will, God's way, discovering an assignment from God, and then taking that assignment and now uh, adding the favor of heaven onto that. And now they are now beginning to influence their cities, their towns, their politicians, they're people that are in government, in education, in the arts and entertainment, in media, in all of these other areas. Uh, they are beginning to influence them, especially into the business realm. 
And he believes that the business realm is the most powerful realm to influence into all areas of society. And this is a very, very important area that every Christian, we need to have influence in society. We need to use whatever influence God gives us to make a difference in the culture, to make a difference in our education systems. For so many years, Christians have, you know, abrogated that responsibility. They've given it over to the secular realm. And now we see how that secular realm is now so dominated in the media, so dominated in education, in all the major business circles, the major companies that control all of the tech uh, of society are almost all progressive. And they're, they're, they're from a perspective that does not acknowledge God and does not put God first. And so I want to just... Um, you know, end up with uh, with what Dave's objective is. And Dave's objective is to, first of all, turn Australia into a sheep nation. He talks about uh, Matthew 25, the, the sheep nation concept that Jesus is not, he says, it says that Jesus uh, gathers all the nations before him. And the nations, it's not, doesn't say the sheep or the goats. He does, he talks about the sheep nations and the goat nations. Dave Hodgson believes that he can help Australia to become a, uh, the first sheep nation. He says it's small enough and it's, it can be influenced enough. And because of that, that it become a nation where, where there's, the greed is gone, where the ills of society are fixed because people begin to operate in a different way. And he believes that they, they, they can begin to take care of the poor, they can take care of the prisoners, that they can take care of, of the, the sick and the infirm, and they can take care of people's needs. They can take care of people having jobs and having, you know, dignity in their lives, and that they can begin to do business God's way. Now, Dave really looks at how to do that, and it's not just a, a pie-in-the-sky type of idea. But he has a very tangible strategy to do that. Number one, he very much believes in, uh, in what we call city transformation. That city transformation, uh, Dave re has, has studied it and he's, he's demonstrated that if you can get 6% of the businesses in a city to do business God's way, to get rid of the spirit of mammon and to actually do things in a godly type of way that you can begin to change the culture of the city. Just 6%, and there are at least 6% of businesses in a city are owned by Christians, but Christians have to be taught and trained how to do business God's way, how to get rid of the spirit of mammon. And so that's why David started a website. It's called kingdominvestors.com.au. Dave did not get me and ask me to even do this podcast, but I have been so influenced by his life. I've seen his influence in the marketplace. And because of him, I've now begun to just explore and to find people all over the world who are doing this type of business, who are using their business as an extension to build God's kingdom. At the end of the day, we want to see God's kingdom established. The resources come into the kingdom of God that are needed to get the job done of the end time harvest. And Dave Hodgson has really, really epitomized that. So just a few things to, to summarize and what we've learned from Dave Hodgson. Number one, you know, his background growing up in a very difficult situation, being, you know, abused as a child, bullied as a child, uh, going to a boarding school, being separated from his family and his parents, all of those things, your background does not need to define you. Dave has been able to, to uh, you know, to rise above that and that God is also involved that no matter what background you had, God will somehow redeem it and turn it and use it because David was, uh, you know, grew up in having to fight for everything. Now he's learned to fight for God's kingdom and that, that training has helped him to become who he is now in the marketplace. And then you know, number two is that we all need to serve God like soldiers. You know, Dave, he just, it's God says something and Dave says, you know, you want me to jump God? How high? And God I mean, whenever God speaks to Dave, the obedience level that he has is so military-like. It's so much whatever is the commanding officer saying, that's what I'll do. No matter what it costs me, no matter how much I have to sacrifice for it. He has such an obedience, and I believe all of us can learn from that. And then number three, which goes along with that, is that obedience is the key. Dave has an obedience that is so phenomenal. His obedience and his discipline in his personal life is just incredible. I've learned so much from watching him. And then number four, 
you know, we all need to get rid of the spirit of mammon. No matter what, we may not even recognize it, but you know, wherever there's a sense where we are greedy, where we are, you know, I believe that's why gambling is, is really, uh, uh, you know, has a problem with God because there's a spirit behind gambling. It's a greedy spirit. It's a greed that wants to gain and get something for not having to do much. And so we've got to be very, very careful that that spirit of mammon doesn't creep in and we don't even recognize it, but we all need to get rid of the spirit of mammon. And then, you know, Doing business God's way and learning to do God's will God's way, learning to discover the assignment of heaven. I've learned that that's such a powerful principle. Dave, when he, has, when he discovered what God wanted him to do and he began to understand the assignment of heaven, he began from that point onwards to prosper. And he said him personally, he could do a business up to $2 million. But only when he began to submit, join himself to his church, and be a partner with them, and then do business God's way without the spirit of mammon, he went to $100 million, and now he's at over $1.2 billion that he's worth. And then, you know, changing culture from the marketplace. We need to understand that this is a very powerful principle and um, that the purpose of gaining resources is to gain influence so that we can impact all of these different spheres of influence in society and then finally, Dave has taken what he's learned and he's begun to share it with the global church and the global body. He gives it out, you know, and, and in, in such a selfless way and he shares on such a consistent level. He now wants to just pour his heart to train other businesses, other leaders, other cities, other countries, other, other regions of the world, how to influence their, their communities and how to to do business God's way, to gain wealth, and to do things that are going to impact their nations for God. And so these are the lessons that I've learned from Dave Hodgson. I just want to close up by just closing in a word of prayer. Uh, Lord, I just pray for every person that we would grow in this, in this understanding and knowledge and in wisdom, Father, how we can do business God's way, how we can get rid of the spirit of mammon, how we can become soldiers in his kingdom, how we can learn to be disciplined in everything that we do, Lord, that we can harness, Father, our calling and that we can become influential and that we can impact our generation and our culture for the kingdom of God. I ask you to seal this word into every person's life, and I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next time, God bless you. If you've enjoyed this podcast and you have a hunger to learn more from these legends of the Christian faith, please check out the ISOM at isomonline.org. You can get an associate, bachelor's, or master's degree, each in as little as a year. Get trained for ministry, get an award that's globally recognized, and learn from some of the best teachers in the world. Check out isomonline.org today. Please subscribe to Lessons from Legends on the Charisma Podcast Network, cpnshows.com, and Apple Podcasts, and give us a five-star review. A visual version of Lessons from Legends and many of the referenced videos and documentaries can be found on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash ministry degree or by simply searching ministry degree on the YouTube site. Also, check us out and follow the audio versions on Google Podcasts and Google Podcasts.